Addy or Epos Vox here. Welcome back to my Streamlabs desktop tutorial course. Today, it's all things CloudBot. CloudBot is Streamlabs' chatbot that can be used to manage your stream, to ban spammers, let people know what music you're listening to, run polls, host giveaways, timers, commands, moderate your Twitch and YouTube chat, lots of neat features with CloudBot, and we're going to be checking out in this video, in this episode of the Streamlabs desktop tutorial course sponsored by Streamlabs. Let's jump in. So first and foremost, to get to CloudBot in Streamlabs Desktop, expand your sidebar and under Dashboard, CloudBot. It's just going to open up the web dashboard to get to your bot settings. There is a lot of cool stuff here. In order to use it at all, you will need to do slash mods Streamlabs in both a Twitch and YouTube chat. Just for ease of use right now, we're going to focus on Twitch. So I'm going to go to my Twitch channel. I'm going to open up the chat and slash mod Streamlabs. Granted moderator privileges to Streamlabs. Easy peasy. Now we come back over here. And we choose to activate CloudBot. This is going to turn on the chatbot and allow it to start functioning in your Twitch chat. And you can see activity status here. It works in Twitch, YouTube, and Trovo at the moment. And you can see whether it's turned on in any of those chats right here at the top. Now... This chat bot can be used for custom commands alongside traditional moderation. And so the very first thing you get is the moderation just default protection level. You can see here what this changes for your stream. So it introduces spam detection to determine whether someone's spamming your chat or maybe they're just a regular that gets really excited and messages a lot. You can increase the severity or like the sensitivity of its detection there. Uh, you can see here link blockage, emote spam detection, paragraph detection, those kinds of things. So let's say we want medium protection. We just slide it right there. But then you can actually customize the individual protections here on a per category basis. And you can just turn them off. Like maybe you want, maybe you're doing a stream where you're reacting to TikToks or YouTube videos or something. And a lot of people are sending links for you to react to. Well, if they're sending links in chat, you don't want your chat bot just automatically picking up and banning them too quickly or the chat you know the, the the whole stream gimmick doesn't work so you could turn it off for that stream and then maybe turn it on in another stream when you're not doing that so you don't just get link rated when it's not necessary but then we can come in and take a look at the preferences for each of those so for caps protection if people are spamming in all caps you can automatically permit it based on if they're a subscriber if they're a regular which means like a repeat chatter or both of them or none of them maybe no one gets to use all caps all the time and if they do it, then they get timed out or purged or banned. And then you get to put a response in the chat when that punishment is dished out. Then you see here you have a threshold of the max number of capitalized letters that can be permitted before it enacts the punishment. So I'm just going to say timeout is fine, but we're going to auto permit regulars and subscribers. Or just regulars, because people could subscribe but have never chatted before and then spam you. But you can change the flexibility of this beyond the default settings level on a per category basis here, which is great. Lots of nuance there where you can cater this exactly to your community. Let's say you got a community that likes to send long messages. They really want you to know the details about their life and their day, and you enjoy responding to those things. Then you can come in here, and you can permit regulars to do paragraphs. Still new normal like blacklisted words or usernames to detect for spam. But otherwise, maybe maybe regulars can do that. And then you save it. But maybe you hate long chat messages. Maybe you are like an intense focus streamer. You don't want anyone sending long messages that is going to get you killed in the game or distract you too much. You can just set it to not. No one's allowed to send a paragraph. You can get super iron fisty with it if you want. All of those settings for moderation, really flexible, really powerful stuff. I'm glad it's there. Then you get to do the fun thing of you can actually customize the name of your cloud bot on your given channels by having a separate account. And in this case, I have a bot account. So I'm going to choose click. You can you can create one, but I, I have one. So I'm going to click here to add. And what it's going to allow you to do is to sign in and connect your Twitch account for that bot with Streamlabs. The problem here is that I'm already signed in in my main account. You don't want to do that. I'm going to sign out. So now I'm going to link it with my Dinglebot account. <laughs> Old Destiny reference. And now, CloudBot, when it responds in my Twitch chat, it won't say Streamlabs. It'll say it's coming from my bot account, which is awesome. It adds that extra little personalization to your stream 
It makes it easier to find things and gives you kind of that brand control. You're still using Streamlabs. You're not ashamed of using Streamlabs or anything like that, but you want it to be your branded thing. You get to do that. Same thing with YouTube. I don't have an account easily set up for that, but you can link that there as well. Beyond that, we get some more traditional chatbot functionality, which if you've, if you've never used one before, oh boy, you are in for a treat and probably a little bit of overwhelm because you get custom commands. So for example, I have set up a custom command to link to the music that I use, which is produced in-house by my community manager and is royalty-free and safe for anyone to use in their streams and videos. You can add a command and say, uh, pizza. And then you can put in the response that you want the bot to put in your chat right there. Learn more about Addy's recipes and cooking at, and then the link to my blog, neurospicy.cooking. You can have it either respond directly in the chat itself, which is what most people will want, or there are some commands, such as for giveaway entries or other things, where you might actually want it to whisper that person instead of chatting. You have that option available to you. And then you can control whether regular subscribers, mods, or only the streamer have access to that command, which is sick. And then you can have like points costs and things like that for the command if you need to. So full customize your stream and your points allocations and all that fancy stuff to your heart's content. You can add counters so that every time someone uses a command, it adds to a counter, which can build more custom features for your stream, variables in a similar way. You got max, min, timer, title, those kinds of things that you can reference in your command and in the text that it outputs and settings for your cooldowns of the command so people don't spam them too much, things like that. You will want to have some pretty aggro cooldowns if you're a new streamer just because you don't want your chat to only be flooded with commands. Timers, these can be used to track things in your stream. A lot of fun. Quotes, you can add quotes from a game, from your stream. You can have community members add quotes to your stream. Goofy things you say that can then be referenced back in commands in the chatbot, which is crazy. You can see the queue of pending commands. Like if you get a bunch, of, if you have a really pop in chat and a bunch of people are firing commands, then they're going to get put in a queue and things are going to go in the order that the bot deems appropriate, which is mostly just first come first serve. And obviously they like juggle spam and things like that. And you can see like if they ask you questions or if they can enter to like send comments to you or links to you or whatever, you can have it add to the queue. And then if you finish your stream and you didn't get to them all, you can remove it all or whatever. Loyalty points, that's where you get into the mini games, the, 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 the point system, those kinds of things. Uh, loyalty store for all of those points. You can add polls. You can build polls that your chat can then interact with the chatbot for right here. Which starter should... Which Pokemans is best? Mewtwo. Command. All the commands start with exclamation point, usually. Exclamation point, Mewtwo. And Bulbazar, exclamation point, Bulba, add, and confirm. And now we have a poll that I can start at any point in time, so you can build these up before your streams if you plan this out, and then start it at any time so chat can start entering that in with the chatbot. You don't have to do it before your stream, I'm just saying it's easier if you already have it ready. You can do betting mini games. you can host giveaways here, I've already showed the giveaway widget before, you can add regulars to your stream itself or they can be kind of added through the bot. And then you've got some broader settings for extending into Streamlabs desktop, your language, connecting or importing stuff from Nightbot, if that's what you used before, which is neat. They also have a new modules section, which is pretty crazy. Here you can set up a lot of new experimental features, such as getting alerts in your chat alongside the normal stream alerts so that it pops up in chat saying, hey, so-and-so tipped for X number of dollars or so-and-so gift bombed or whatever. Just adds a little chat element, both to mark the occasion and to kind of help further point it out to chatters that, hey, maybe they should react to that in some way. Uh, you can have automatic shout outs when certain streamers join your chat. So if I turn that on, go to preferences, I can add some streamers, add streamer. Nutty Lamau. Actually, I think it changed it to Nutty recently, but that's fine. Confirm. Unable to find user. Thought so. I think it's just Nutty now. Yep. Boom. Nutty. Finite singularity. Boom. 
And now anytime they join my chat, they're going to get a custom. Obviously, I didn't customize it. You want to customize it. But you can build a custom shout out for your favorite streamers when they show up in your chat, which is a really neat and just kind of wholesome thing that I love. And I'm going to set up for every single one of my friends. There are lots of mini games for heists, for gambling. If you have a media share widget set up in Streamlabs desktop, which if I go to sources, media share under widgets, you're going to add that source and then you can set how you want viewers to be able to feed into this along with some spam security. And then viewers can use a command to request a YouTube video be played in that media share source over your stream. Magic 8-Ball, you can let the viewers interact with that. Slots, mini games, dueling, build an emote pyramid in your chat. Just lots of things to help keep viewers entertained. Because these days, it seems everyone needs extra stuff to do alongside your stream. And we can debate that all day about whether it's actually necessary or not. But the fact that there are so many kind of deep features built into this is pretty sick. The only one that is like exclusively Streamlabs Ultra Limited, I'm pretty sure, is the custom name, which is great. Like, I'm fine with that being lim limited to Streamlabs Ultra because otherwise it's just Streamlabs. They put a lot of work into here. You got so many features. You can build out the most interactive, entertaining stream without having to say it. Like, all of this could be done while you're just staring blankly at the, stream at the screen, not even talking, just while they're doing the mini games. I don't know if anyone would watch it, but you could do that. In the next episode, we're going to check out how to remove your background in Streamlabs Desktop. Hope you enjoyed this one. Check out the playlist in the description below for more guides on Streamlabs Desktop. Thank you for your support on this series. And remember to be kind. Rewind.